Hey guys, welcome back. So I came with another interesting video on React JS with TypeScript. So generally people can develop React JS with the core language called JavaScript. I mean, uh, every components what you create in React JS will be on JavaScript language. So now what happens is the trend has changed and uh, people started using in the place of JavaScript language, people start using TypeScript. So to develop React JS application, they are started using TypeScript as a base language. Okay. So Angular is one framework which already started using uh, TypeScript as a base language so and React just also started using TypeScript and most of the companies nowadays started using TypeScript as a base language for React JS uh, kind of applications okay because TypeScript is most important than JavaScript because TypeScript you can find a type safety because when you want to create uh, any application or you want to create any particular object so you have to specify its type to avoid uh, you know a lot of errors and issues with the typing okay um, so TypeScript is most popular and uh, which is given by Microsoft as we all know and uh, so you can integrate TypeScript with ReactJS so ReactJS can be developed with TypeScript so in this video what we do is uh, it's like a crash course on React with TypeScript based applications so where we understand uh, almost every concepts like uh, how to create a props uh, i mean how to create a component with uh, a react and typescript language first before all that uh, uh, we'll start with how to create a react application with typescript templates okay so one small difference is like jsx and tsx files will be there okay in javascript is jsx and here it is tsx files now uh, here uh, we will learn the, from basics like how to create a component like functional component how to create with typescript and uh, a class based component how to create with typescript and what is the props handling with uh, class as well as functional and uh, state handling with class and functional uh, that's completely typescript language and uh, uh, we also see like data binding form handling like uh, conditional list uh, list rendering and also we'll see some uh, routing concepts and how to get data from the server how to make your application connected to the server and all so all these things we will uh, learn in this crash course and uh, so before jumping to this course you should have a basic knowledge on uh, react js because uh, here i'm not going to explain each and everything uh, from from very basic level but at least if you have idea on a react js earlier so it will be easy for you to understand okay so at the end we also are going to develop one interesting application so that gives you a more confidence on learning react js with typescript okay so something new a different way of developing typescript and react js application so let's get started and before going to get start if you don't want to miss this type of interesting video so please do subscribe to my channel okay so let's start all right so let's create a folder structure for react js I mean, uh, you can create React.js projects. So generally, how you create a React.js project? Uh, the command is npx create React app space first app. Okay, your application name will be first app. So npx create React app first app. So but when you enter this particular command, so React.js, uh, the default projects will be created based on a language called JavaScript. Okay, the default language will be JavaScript. But if you want to create a same application on TypeScript language, what you have to do is you have to add an extra step hyphen hyphen template. Okay, is equal to TypeScript. Simple. So apart from this, I mean, along with this, you need to add an extra step called this one. Okay, so this is the command to create a React.js application using TypeScript. So let me copy this command. So I go to any folder location you can create on desktop as well so let me go to some other location some i drive youtube ui brains yeah so i'll copy the path i'll open a command from cd space enter so i drive yeah here i want to create a project so i'll just copy this okay and then i'll uh, paste it enter okay and make sure you have a proper internet connection because uh, this will download uh, a lot of resources of react.js from online uh, and makes a complete setup in your uh, local system so make sure you have proper internet connection and try this command so after a few minutes uh, it will generate a react.js project okay let's see how it works all right so now we have created the application uh, so 
at last we get like this uh, so first tab has been created let me open this first tab on my editor okay so let me go to the location so here is the location we got our first tab so let me copy this path okay I'll go to here I'll open it not there come on um, first tab okay yes yes okay so now it's been um, loading okay fine uh, now one second since something indexing happening okay fine so some indexing is happening in the background that's fine uh, see when you see the folder structure it is same like uh, the existing you know react with javascript uh, way only i mean folder structures and all same because node modules public src and all these are common just like um, javascript base uh, react but only one thing you can see is the most common differences is in javascript base applications of react you have a extension called jsx okay so jsx is the extension okay but here it is tsx extension because typescript is oriented uh, language okay so tsx file so when you see here if I go to src, see app.css fine, but app.test.tsx is a typescript file. And here also <clears throat> app.tsx typescript file and index.tsx like that. And there are some extra configuration is tsconfig.json. Okay. So this is a typescript uh, configuration file for the project. Okay. That's all remaining and all same. Okay. This is also ts file, ts file, setup test.ts file like that and public is common because html files only uh, that's fine okay so this is a regular folder structure okay so let me start the application first so let's say npm start okay so let's see how it works um, so i am starting it it runs on 3000 obviously um, now okay so wait for it to start so no issues found it is successfully started so you get this default uh, you know react.js project so we are successfully created a react.js project on typescript template okay now uh, so we need to remove a few things from here uh, i go to uh, we all know this is coming from app.tsx previously it was app.jsx and now here it is app.tsx so app.tsx here i don't need this entire content i remove it i don't need this svg and uh, i can change i can change this to a uh, react dot fragment react dot fragment and i'll change it some content like h2 app component okay and uh, let's see yeah we got this but still i don't need these uh, styles and all i go to app.chs i clear everything from here and also i go to app uh, index.css i don't need anything of this i save it yeah the default uh, font i k i got and the default text has got app component we got like this okay that's fine now it's time to add uh, a new concept okay uh, I mean first we're gonna start with how to apply a basic CSS for your project and also we will start using a bootstrap okay how to configure bootstrap for the project and start doing all the next things of uh, react application okay so first of all uh, if you want to apply some styles for this particular content you can you go with the regular CSS the plain CSS so how you apply CSS is uh, you can apply CSS multiple ways like inline internal and external so I'll talk about first inline so for example if you want to apply some inline styles so you need to write like this style uh, it is an object in that you take another object for styles okay so I'll say color color with 
red okay so i'm saying style is equal to an object with a property called color and values red so this is like a inline styles okay you can apply the css inline styles so if i say this inline style so you got it is in red color okay for example i change this to blue so what happened it will change to blue color so this is inline uh, instead of inline you can create internal styles as well how you create the internal styles is uh, here so here i say uh, let's colors is equal to an object okay so i have created an object in that color is of type red okay so it was blue i have given a property called color with an object uh, color red so what i do is instead of writing an object here you can just specify the object name which you have created here okay so style is equal to in the bracket so this is the react expression the double curly braces i mean the single curly braces and the the, the property name i mean the the variable what you create you can specify here so you now what happened it is in red color now i change it back to blue so it changed to blue color so this is like the internal way of applying styles okay now i'll tell you another way that is external styles so how we add external styles is so instead of writing style tag or i mean style attribute or the styles like this you can delete it you don't need to write any style tag so it is back to you know original black color uh, the regular css how you write see there is a import statement app dot css so in the app dot css you can write all your styles for example i'll say colors is my class name some class name like colors is my class name in that color again red this is a regular css okay so color red my class name is colors so this class name i want to apply for this particular h2 so you write directly class name class name colors that's all so i specify class name colors so what happened these particular colors uh, property will get supply for this content now check it's become red because you have apply a color red uh, i change it back to blue or something so it's back to blue color okay for example you want to add a font family uh, you know calibri and sans serif it apply the font family as well you you want to apply a background color whatever anything you want to apply it affects here okay so this is one way this is one way of adding css uh, in app.css uh, generally what happens is in react.js for every component there will be a corresponding css file okay so app.tsx uh, is the main uh, you know app component right the root component so root component specific css file is the same name app.css here you can write the styles okay instead instead for the whole application also one css file is there okay apart from this app.css because this app.css only works for app okay but i want to make it applicable for everyone uh some something global to this app.css we have is index.css because in index.tsx app has been configured so app is somewhat little when compared to index okay so app has been configured here and this root level is index.css this is like a global style sheet for react so instead of writing your styles in app.css i'll cut it i'll keep it in index.css okay so index has been imported in this index.tss in that app was there so app also gets the styles applied see the styles has been applied you want to confirm go to index.css change to red again it applies okay so either you write for a particular component style sheet you create or else you can write a global styles using a index.css as well okay so now we have understand how to apply a css styles for a regular component now it's time to configure a bootstrap 
and uh, a font awesome and also google fonts for your react.js application so that your application becomes rich in ui okay so let's start a bootstrap configuration all right so now to configure bootstrap for your project so you can search online for example bootstrap npm okay so this is the one so the command goes to be <coughs> npm i bootstrap okay you can copy that i'll go to your uh, application here so let me open this yeah here i say npm install bootstrap or shortcut i bootstrap and enter so this will install the latest uh, uh, bootstrap uh, from online and make sure you have internet connection again yeah so you check now we got uh, bootstrap 5.1.3 the current version as of now and uh, so next uh, i want to use a font awesome so at uh, it font awesome yeah this one font awesome free mm. yep so i got it this is the command so i'll copy and i'll paste it enter so you get the font awesome as well so apart from the font awesome you need to add uh, the cdn link as well uh, to get all the icons so you can search for uh, something called uh, cdnjs space font awesome okay you get directly the link yeah this is cdnjs.com where you can find almost all libraries so i can search for a package because what is a version has installed is uh, yeah so what version has been installed is 5.15.4 so same thing i selected so i get the actual link for all so copy the link tag and where you have to paste the link tag of cdn link uh, of font awesome is in your html file go to somewhere in here you paste the entire link tag okay it is trying to download yes download okay that's fine okay so we have uh, just downloaded so we have just downloaded for a bootstrap and for awesome but not configured okay so where you have to configure this bootstrap styles and all is uh, you go to src and uh, uh, index.tsx it was jsx now tsx okay so you need to add here let's say font awesome okay so let's say import from node uh, node underscore modules slash uh, because uh, oh we are in index.tsx right in src folder but you have to come out from the folder okay i'll say dot dot slash okay and there you have it for awesome slash font awesome slash css slash all dot css okay fine and then i have to connect to bootstrap okay so how you going to bootstrap is simple uh, bootstrap dot dot slash uh, again node uh, underscore module slash bootstrap bootstrap slash dist slash css slash bootstrap dot css yeah this one okay and let's also connect the javascript file uh, that is again import dot dot slash node modules slash bootstrap uh, this js and bootstrap dot bundle okay that is bootstrap dot css and this is bundle dot js which contains everything okay fine so now you have configure a font awesome and the bootstrap style sir okay but how will you confirm it the so one thing i confirm is see the font has changed because bootstrap uses this font roboto font okay and uh, let me go to app uh, instead of class name like this i say text uh, warning see change the warning color so bootstrap has been applied successfully okay we want to have some icons let's take i tag uh, with the class name fa minus something called home okay for example fa fa minus 2x so you get a home icon as well so bootstrap and font awesome has successfully configured so you want to configure 
uh, even uh, Google font you can search for a uh, Google fonts and uh, here I'll be using a Ubuntu font so Ubuntu this is my favorite font yeah I have selected both actually I think some dancing script also yeah so go to import statement so I need to copy this import uh, yeah we need to add uh, import is same index.css file because this is your global style I'm removing existing style sheet okay the colors and I'll paste the import statement and let's say for uh, body tag my font I want to apply is Ubuntu font Ubuntu font and it's important because it dominates uh, bootstrap style so I'll apply this yeah now check see it's been changed to Ubuntu font okay so that's fine now uh, let's make uh, app component something newer okay so uh, anyway we have applied a bootstrap so let's apply some bootstrap styles as well for this okay so I'll add a class called some container container one grid system and in that one row single column and p dot h3 some heading let's say app component simple just app component uh, I need to apply some margin top it's margin top uh, 3 okay so you want to convert this to a bold text what you do a font weight bold so you get the bold text you want to change the color text success so green color okay that's fine and uh, uh, one second uh, for the whole body tag right I want to apply some other you know background color so let me select something yeah I guess this color but I want to have even lighter yeah instead of white background I'll say for whole body tag background color is this one okay yeah that's fine so app component so under that uh, you want to write some text you say a uh, paragraph with a class called uh, font style uh, italic okay let's say lorem 34 tab okay nice so this is bootstrap setup and you want to have a button um, let's start with a button a simple button button with the class uh, uh, btn btn minus success and let's say uh, read more okay so that's fine uh, you want to have a small button uh, you say like this b b btn hyphen sm small button yeah that's fine looks good okay and uh, icons are not there uh, let's add an icon as well i tag uh, with the class something like fa minus fa minus uh, book uh, some book like that just just book you get the book read more okay that's fine Array. where was my background color I think it's you have to specify it's important and don't dominate from bootstrap perfect okay even after refresh you get it back okay so now what you have done is we have configured a bootstrap font awesome icons and also the google font and we have experiment on bootstrap styles as well so we understand now how to apply css styles and bootstrap styles so now it's time to understand what is props state and using class components and functional components so let's start now all right so before we start applying a props and state so first i tell you how to create uh, you know how the component looks like in uh, uh, react with typescript okay so in src i create a folder called components okay so in this i create one uh, uh, so previously it was javascript now you have to select a typescript okay and you must select the typescript jsx file okay so the name is something called customer the we have customer dot tsx okay typescript jsx file okay so first i'm going to write uh, uh, a functional component and then uh, we'll see the class based component as well okay so first import react from react okay and then let customer 
is equal to a function okay so if i just write a function like this this is a regular jsx file but how a difference from uh, typescript is we need to specify here react.fc so this stands this stands a functional component so once you specify the type because generally types you have to specify the types right so if you specify the type then it asks for something is missing okay because if it is a really a functional component it there should have some uh, you know uh, typescript elements in i mean the the react uh, uh, functionality inside okay react element is missing okay so return something there react dot fragment and yeah that's fine and h2 let's say customer component okay and let's say export default customer okay fine so it exactly looks like your jsx only one extra thing is uh, react dot fc react dot fc okay and even more elaborate uh, 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 functional component you wanted to know uh, generally you know the props and state right so props means uh, you can transfer a data from one component to another we use the concept called props and uh, to maintain the state internally for a particular component we'll go with a state same story here but a props and state you have to specify the type previously in jsx we never specify the type but especially in typescript language you have to specify the type for example how you specify the props types it is like this you have to write an interface i props okay some name you can specify it doesn't matter i props interface and here you have to specify what are all the properties this component is going to get from outside okay fine and how you specify that here is see here uh, fc of type i props okay and these props will be received in this function with an object okay i mean this particular object specified values will receive over here okay so this is a regular functional component using typescript okay and let me connect to app.tsx somewhere uh, here i'll add a, i have a row right yeah let's add another row single column so i'll say customer component so if i add a customer component so i get customer component over here okay that's fine now now for example i repeat <coughs> customers you get multiple customer components that's fine okay so now it's time to understand a props concept okay i have to provide some extra values to the customer okay so the customer i wanted to provide a name something called rajan i want to provide a customer with a property called name rajan see in jsx with react uh, you can just provide as it is and it doesn't throw you any error okay but here when i'm starting with the name rajan it shows the error so it says that the name string is not assignable to the type i props it does not have a pipe i in the i props it doesn't have a property called name okay so because it is strictly typed okay so what you have to do is before you start providing a value you must declare in the customer component what are all the properties you are trying to look for okay so i am looking for a name of type string i am looking for a age of type number and i'm looking for a title of type string again so three properties and three names and types has been written here okay and how these guys can be accessible is in the function parameter of object you say name age and title okay this way this way uh, you wanted to see that this write some console dot log of console dot log of name age and title like this okay so when you see the console log as of now because nothing has passed right i didn't pass anything but it should show the error okay see i declare customer will receive all these properties but it it throws the error because you declared these so and so properties but you are not passing it uh, and one more thing i tell you here in this interface 
I declare all the properties, right? So what are all the properties you declare in the I prop? Is there like mandatory properties? You must have to pass. If you don't pass, yes, it throws the error. Okay. Uh, you can actually make these properties as optional also. For example, you can add a question mark over there. Okay. Question mark and question mark. So those are like string or undefined can be optional. Okay. So if you declare as an optional, it doesn't throw any error because it is quite okay because optional so nothing to pass okay this made as of now everything is optional all properties so now it's happy because just want to see empty values over there okay so i will uh, inspect console see all values are undefined because you are not pass it okay that's fine now i'll uh, make all these guys to you know mandatory properties and back here yeah i'll provide it name uh, something called rajan and age some 25 years and title is um, something called uh, software engineer so i provide three properties for customer name age and title okay so now it is happy no error and also my customer component is also happy no error yeah, let's see the console log what was has been received go back and refresh go back see rajan 25 and software engineer so all the properties has been received from the parents called app to the child customer and i how you uh, you know try to use it i can just write some uh, bootstrap styles with content let's write for example ul li uh, just regular bootstrap classes like list uh, group and this is with a class called this group item so i'll say the name so how do you display name uh, name expression just say name that's it okay name age and this is title okay so this is uh, you write age and this is title title that's all okay you got a props from the parent and you receive it you specify a type and you receive it and you print it now check see the customer has received rajan and this one and this one okay so now we understand how can we receive a props from the parent to the child and how you can declare them also we have seen because this declaration is must and should because it is a TypeScript. You must specify the types of it. Okay. Props also you specify the, uh, you know, type, interface, object type and also state also you have to specify. Okay, fine. So first we are discussing only props. Yeah. So now we discuss the props concept for a functional component. Okay. So now let's see same props concept for a class based components quite legacy, but we have to understand a function uh, a class based component also with props let's see now okay so for that what i do is in components i create another typescript file called jsx you select and let's say customer class generally you never give a extension called class but i just wanted to have a differentiate between the customer and customer uh, functional class components so i just give an ex extension called class okay generally you never write a class or something even if it is a class component okay class now here how uh, i mean how the structure looks like is import react from react okay so in this uh, what you do is yeah class right so export class um, customer class like this okay now so this class is a regular class if you write a class like this it is like a normal class okay but i want to have this has a component how you made as a component you specify react.fc but how you make a class as a component is you need to extends from react dot component okay and this component will receive two things okay so this component of type i mean generally component have two things right one is props and the last state so here the first property is props and second property is state so here you can specify interface i state interface 
and also interface i props like this so i state i props so two interfaces has been declared so you specify here i props and i state now this is your component so in that you need to have a constructor and render function this say con tab you get the constructor but still uh, in in jsx you write just like this but in tsx the props you have to specify of type i props okay i props this one and lastly render function is just a regular one just say ren tab okay so this say react dot fragment okay and i write something called h2 or h3 uh, customer class component okay fine that's it okay so this will become your class based component with react and typescript okay fine then how can you use it go to app.tsx i write another row single column write a customer class okay if i write a customer class i get customer class component here okay perfect so we made a, a class component so now next step is um, i want to have props as well okay i have to provide a props like uh, same this guy i want to provide a name as something called rajan so again it throws the error because you have not specify any props to accept okay that's why it says you can't provide so what you do is again back here what are all the properties you want to specify you must have to uh, you know declare them so i need a name of type string and age of type number and also title of type string okay same uh, same properties and same types i have specified same as customer okay so name age title i declared sir how can you access them i'll tell you how can i access them but before that how you provide them yes it shows the error because nothing has been uh, optional everything is mandatory so i can provide just like this guy i copy i'll provide like this because same properties names and same uh, you know values also same type of data so customer class name age title i i have provided so now you go back yes it's been there in the type but how can you access the actual value is in the props okay so how you access is you specify here um, you can actually write some console dot log of this dot props this keyword in in in, in class base this dot props so props object holds all these properties so you want to see that back here and refresh uh, go back yeah see name age and title the whole props object has been printed okay i have to use the values so how i use the values just like a regular one ul li uh, a bootstrap structure uh, some list uh, list group and this is some um, all right list the group item let's see the name how we get the name expression mm, this dot props dot name okay let me remove this okay and same like this copy this dot props dot h this dot props dot title and this is h and this is title okay so fine now check the customer class component also able to receive all the values fine so this is how you can uh, declare a class component with all the props but one last thing so instead of writing this this dot props dot name so can't you you know uh, make it bit smaller is you can use a destructuring concept so what is that is you can specify let something is equal to this dot prop just one time this dot props and what is that i'm going to receive is i need to have a name i need to have a age i need to have a title okay so let me destructure these properties from the props object 
so if that is the case you can just use only name only age only title okay see same like here only just name age and title but here also same but it is not like that only name age and title but you have use a destructuring from this dot props otherwise uh, it must be this dot props dot name only okay i hope you got that but here no destructuring directly you receive a props and you can use it okay so fine so now we have understand uh, a props concept in functional components as well as the class based components so now let's talk about a state concept okay so how to make a state concept for functional as well as class based components so let's see that now all right so now let's start with a state so what i do is first of all i will uh, comment these things the the customer components okay so it's been uh, commented yep so now what i do is uh, in this i create another component a new typescript with j6 the name will be employee okay same like this but a state concept so i take another name called employee j6 fine yeah so first we're going to start with a functional component and then we'll talk about a class based component with a stator okay so here i'll say import react from react and then i'll say let employee um, is equal to a function regular function okay so this will become a react component so react.fc and uh, you declare some props i props and also interface i state because we're going to declare a stator so that one so here you have i props okay and let's say return something and that have react dot fragment let's say h3 employee component okay and let's say export default employee okay so this is the full fledged reacts functional component using typescript okay let me connect to app i have commented the previous components of customer so i'll add uh, one row one row single uh, column and let's say employee okay so when i add employee to the app you get the employee component that's fine now i don't need to pass anything from the app i just wanted to maintain my own data so what type of data you maintain that you have to declare in a state previously it was props to receive from the parent now i want to maintain by my own that is state so again i'll say name of type string because it is easy for you to understand because same properties so h is number and then title i have a string okay so i have a name age and title three things now what i do is um yeah how you declare a state in functional component how you declare a state i mean how you uh, create a state is using a use state hook okay so let an array is equal to use state okay so use state import from react so here this is the regular for example state and set uh, state okay so this line is regular quite regular in jsx but what's the difference between tsx is you have to specify it is of i state okay this u state is a of type i state okay so in that you have to specify the default values of it so let's say name is rajan and age is 25 and title is something called software engineer okay so state and set state so you declare a state like this but only thing you have to specify the type and you must have to declare the type okay fine now i have to use them simple state dot name state dot age like that so i'll, I'll show you ul li uh i'll say here class name uh class name list group and this is with the class name list group item uh i i have a name will be what state dot name simple from the state variable okay 
copy that so this is h this is title so state dot h and this is state dot title that's it now go and check you get name age and title so this is how you will maintain a state in a functional component using use state hook but you must have to specify its type like this okay you have a props you specify a props also like this okay that's fine now we only focus on a state so we declare a state here okay so next example what we do is let's create a class based component with a state again okay so what i do is uh, in components i create another typescript file that is employee with a class okay generally uh, to make you feel it's a class component and type jsx file okay dot tsx okay so um how the you know uh, structure so import react from react uh, export class employee class okay so this must be extends from react dot component of any i'll tell you what are all those any so interface i props okay and interface i state okay fine now this will become i props first props and then state okay because when i click on this see component has been declared with props and state okay props and state yeah in this i have a con tab constructor and props of type i props okay that's it constructor done and there's a ren tab render function so let's say react dot fragment and let's say something called h3 uh, employee class okay so and then what i say export uh, is already exported right export class that's fine yeah this is the regular structure of class based component now uh, let's go to app let me declare it here so i'll add another row a single um, column and i'll say employee class so you get the class based component here employee um, what is there employee class component yeah it's a normal functional component and this is a class component okay fine so how you maintain the state then yeah how you maintain the state is in functional regularly we use use state hook but here we use a constructor only first you have to specify the type so name string age number and um, title as string again okay so same like here we declare the type and then how to initialize this inside the constructor so this dot state is equal to an object as i state like this okay an object as i state so where you specify the name with the value rajan and age you specify 25 and title you specify software engineer okay state you have all this okay and how to use them so this dot state dot name this dot state dot age like that so for example you will li so can i copy the structure from here so i copy this i just replace here so instead of state it must say uh, this dot state okay and here also this dot state this dot state so previously it was this dot props and now this dot state okay so let's check you got the data from class based component so instead of writing again uh, you know this dot state and all you can destructure so let something is equal to state uh, sorry it's a, it's a this dot state okay i want name age and title so just declare only name and then just age and then just title okay our local variable so now also you get the data fine okay so now we have successfully uh, you know understand a concept called a state concept how to apply for a functional component as well as a state components now it's time to understand a uh, 
uh, events handling okay how to handle the events especially in a uh, functional and uh, functional components with typescript okay let's see that all right so now we will discuss about uh, events handling and before we start with the events handling let's take a backup okay so my source code is here so how i take a backup is it is in the first app right so i'll copy everything a master of node modules okay so i will uh, a part of node modules and idea okay Node module no idea copy so i will create a folder just for a backup so i'll say react uh, with typescript Okay, let's say react and uh, react ts yes. crash course 2022. Okay, so in this I create a folder called uh, 01 props and state. Okay, base. Okay, so you have taken a backup of props and state examples here. Okay, now back to uh, our uh, um, workspace. So I'll delete the components folder completely and app.tsx I will clear a lot of things uh, this all the rows and columns and are not required okay no import statements required okay so this is done the setup now let's start yeah so before we start with i mean events handling so i have an example of some counter example so let's create a counter example so i will create a directory called components again so now going forward we'll using you know mostly functional components here so i create a component of typescript that is jsx uh, that is a uh, counter okay so have we write quickly import react from react and then uh, let counter is equal to a function this is of type react.fc okay and uh, return something react.fragment okay h3 counter okay yeah here I want to declare a state so um, interface I state interface I props okay and you can specify here of type I props okay so let's say export default counter okay but I don't want to write this every time so what I do is I will uh, simply copy this in src i create a directory called notes in that i create something file something called component.txt i'll paste it because every time don't create it by yourself it takes time okay fine i have uh, created this component uh, now uh, let's configure to app how I configure is simple dot row single column and um, counter you check you get a counter okay fine so now for this counter uh, I need to have uh, just two buttons just increment and decrement buttons and how you can change the state and all we'll see so um, first let's make a design for example one container come on one container one row single call MD Four, one card card body p dot h3 something count value and you have just two buttons okay class uh, some btn btn minus uh, uh, success button let's say increment and we have another one uh, some data button this is for DCR okay so fine simple and you don't have a space uh, margin all the sides is m1 you don't say m1 okay count okay so simple and uh, here i say something called display three slide bigger 
okay count i'll make a value of zero okay if i click on increment it should increment the number and click on decrement should decrement the number okay simple bootstrap setup okay so uh, uh, how you declare a state for this the state i'll say count value initialize um, number no initialization because it is just uh, interface so you declare a type over there okay yeah initialization using use state hook so let something is equal to use state of type i state okay in that my count value starts with zero and what's the name you create a state and set state okay yeah fine and i want to replace this zero with this dynamic zero how you replace expression state dot count okay so it's become zero and you change it to something called 10 it's become 10 automatic okay i make zero okay so fine so now the next step is when i click on this increment i have to increment this number decrement to decrement the number so how do i do is um yeah i make a function let's increment is equal to a function okay so what it does it just updates your state so set state where the count value will be uh, state dot count plus one okay so how i'm updating the set state count value will be state dot count the existing state dot count plus one okay increment and same way uh, you know decrement so let's say uh, here is decr set state of minus one okay that's all so increment to plus one and increment to minus one and how do i call them just say here on click is equal to increment the counter and this is on click is equal to decrement the counter increment and decrement okay so let's check refresh incrementing and decrementing okay yeah of course it's very regular uh, java c function or even type c function are the same and it is like this okay and you can declare this is of type void and this is of type void void is a sense this function doesn't go in not not going to return anything so you must declare of type void okay that way okay so this is how you create a functional component with a state and with events handling okay now uh, if you closely observe this function doesn't take any parameter okay if, if it takes a parameter something called name you must specify of type string like the types of flow for the parameter okay so I'll, I'll I'll take up another example where I explain deeply uh, how can you pass a parameters also for a function call on events handling. Okay, so for that I'll take another component, uh, new uh, uh, TypeScript of JSX something called wish message. Okay, so I'll need something called greeting. Greetings. Okay, so I need to have uh, a design. I go to component.txt, I'll paste it. Only thing I'll replace is counter with greetings. Okay, it's done now. So let's connect to app also. Row single column, let's say greetings. Okay, so let's check you get the greetings. Okay. Yeah, this greetings uh, you have greetings i made in something wrong g r e e that's it right so why it is like greetings okay i made a spelling mistake okay fine uh okay now um, we need to have a design again card structure and we need to have three buttons like good morning good afternoon message so uh, let's take one container okay 
simple container one row single call md5 one card card body you wish you can add some margin top okay yeah so here i will take in the status a message of type string that's all okay yeah uh, so card body so p dot h3 is the message to be display and three buttons good morning good afternoon and this is good evening okay this is some warning and this is danger okay so i have to add some margin okay a simple design uh, i need to have some display three okay fine so some message so simple step when i click on good morning it should be good morning good afternoon and good evening okay fine so let's declare a value first of state let array is equal to uh, use state of i state where message value is to say hello okay so i need to have a state and set state okay i have to read this dynamic value here so you just specify state dot message you get the hello okay so fine and now uh, when i click on good morning this should replace with good morning good afternoon good evening okay so how will you do is i create a function so let change message is equal to a function okay so this function takes up the greeting okay greet message of type string okay this function and returns nothing just is void you have to declare a functions in this way okay so greet takes up string type and it doesn't return anything so void so i say set state where message will be greet simple so here i am taking up a greet as a parameter and i am updating to message so all the functions should call this function and pass some different value so for good morning what i say is on click is equal to function uh, change message with a good morning so i'm calling this uh, you know how to call a function with parameter right so function with parameter greet so now check click on it good morning uh, same story you copy that here and here and this will become okay this way so good morning good afternoon good evening simple okay so fine so we understand now how can we pass even a parameter and you must have to specify its type okay that's it so now we understand how to make events handling with uh, react uh, you know with typescript now let's see the functional i mean uh, form handling okay so how you handle the forms in react js with typescript so let's see that all right so now let's start with uh, form handling so how you handle the forms in uh, react js so what i have is i create a fresh component called uh, login login form okay uh, jsx file yep so here i need to have a snippet i'll copy it from the previous one i will replace here as uh, login form and uh, uh, replace all as done okay so now uh, go to app.tsx and let's connect so i comment uh, the previous guys so i'll take another row and single column i write login form 
okay so i guess get uh, a login form and going forward i don't need any button here you can clear it off okay fine so i have a login form uh, so first we'll make a login form design and then uh, i'll tell you how to handle the form data and, uh, okay so login form first i do is uh, one container one row call md4 on card okay so i need to have a card header for login p dot h4 let's say login here okay and you need to have some changes so let's say text in the center and b uh, bg bg primary okay and text uh, white okay you have a box like this and in that i have uh, one card uh, body yeah here i need to take a form form with two fields uh, first of all input input type is equal to text type text with the class form uh, form control okay and the placeholder is something called username okay i have a username and along with this i need to have a password okay this will be password and this is password and this is submit button so let's say submit and this is btn btn minus uh, primary gain uh, value goes to login okay so fine i have a simple login form uh, so let's see how to bind the form data and then how you submit the form data as well okay so yeah first of all you have to have a state with uh, all the fields so uh, instead of taking two separate variable called username and password i'll take it into an object let's say user object with username of type string and password of type string like this so this is also one way okay uh, there is even another way you can declare this particular object into one a separate file okay for example um, i create another folder called models okay uh, only for specific types you can use models okay ui models so in this i create one typescript file no jsx normal typescript file uh, i user this user object okay so export interface i user so in that i have a username of type string and password of type string so you have taken a separate folder separate file with the type of user so here in login form what i do is instead of making my own object like this i'll say just i user you may declare a user object here itself or you can declare outside so that i can use that for any other uh, component as well but if i declare only inside i can use only for this this component okay so fine i have a user now back here state so let an array is equal to use state use state and this is of type uh, what i state yeah here i have a user object user object with username is empty and password is empty okay so let's say state and set state okay so i have a user object username and password all this okay and uh, how you gonna bind so i need to have a function for on change okay so on change function how you write let's uh, update input is equal to a function okay so here you get the event so generally in uh, you know react js you will create a function like this right uh, in using jsx and javascript uh, but here you have to specify the type as well and this is returns void and this event of type uh, on which 
event you are applying this function okay on which event it is it is react dot change event react dot change event so change event on what what elements input element input element so you can also specify that uh, html input element so this is the one makes a difference between typescript uh, with react and JavaScript with react JavaScript you don't have all those specify specification of types but in types if you have okay fine so now uh, I'll say set state where set state where the user object will be dot 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 user keep hold of all the data so state uh, dot user comma uh, I can just use them dynamically so username and password so I'll say like this event dot target dot name uh, its value is event dot target dot value this is regular using JSX also we do the same story okay so function ready only I want to uh, you know make you understand is the types okay uh, and how to call it for updating my local state is like this so here because I'm using a dynamic property called name so I say name exactly is username matches with the property and uh, value value is from the state so say dot uh, user dot username okay and then on change on change is uh, update input okay and uh, I also use another one required is true because we are not applying any form validation so I just use HTML5 default form validation okay so copy this and I'll go with the password I'll paste it so this will be a password this is also password okay that's fine so uh, you want to see the state change uh, here so what I do is I'll make some pre tag this for the time being uh, json dot stringify of uh, state dot user this is how the state gets changed okay yeah by default it is like username empty password empty so when I'm trying to change the username is updating in the state and I'm trying to change the password is also updating a state so this is just a confirmation is that state is getting really changed or not okay yes we have confirmed because our function is also perfectly working because we can able to state we can able to change the state okay that's fine and this is no more required only for confirmation it was yep so once it is done you click on a login so login is actually a form submission so how you make a form submission is uh, form you say on submit on submit let's say something called a login it's my function name login okay so how you create a login function is like this let login is equal to a function A function okay and it is not just normal JavaScript function it's a type of function and that too on a uh, submitted submission of a form so you get the event of type react dot form event because you're submitting a form it's a form event on what element HTML form element okay this is the difference between TypeScript uh, with react and JavaScript okay so first statement what you do event dot prevent default okay to uh, to stop the page refresh and uh, so simply I'll make console dot log of state dot user because we don't have a server connection as of now so just print it on a console window to console dot log of state dot user so now let me check I refresh and also what about my console window I have a console window open yeah. So I say username uh, something like uh, actually instead of username or email you take uh, small change in the I think in the placeholder username or email okay like this so I type something and uh, I, I just type some let me password and then click on login so you check pay the username and the password so both has come okay so this particular data has going to send to server okay 
So now in this example, we clearly understand how you handle a form data and also how to submit the form data using React with TypeScript. Okay, so now let's take in another example with uh, uh, how can you make, uh, you know, conditionally render your content and list rendering and all we'll see. Okay, let's start. All right. So for, before we start with that, uh, let's take a backup. So I go to our uh, props and state. Yeah. So here I create another folder for uh, uh, zero to hyphen events and forms handling. So let me get the first tab from there. I'll copy crash course events handling and paste. Okay, it's done. So now I can clear the things first and then uh, we'll start. So uh, I don't need components and models, delete them. App.tsx, uh, login form and are not required. And this entire thing is not required. Okay, that's fine. So you check this app component is now okay and the browser no error okay so now it's time to understand uh, conditional rendering and list rendering it means conditionally how you present your data okay it could depend on a conditions on a state uh, so for that i'll uh, start with conditions first that is something called authentication okay so uh, i will create a new directory called components so in this, I create one TypeScript for a component is authentication uh, user JSX file is that. So here I paste it. So counter I replace with authentication user and replace all. Okay. And first let me connect. So I'll go with here dot row and single column. I'll uh, have authentication uh, user okay so i got authentication user connected fine so now here what i do is uh, i'll be having this login log out, log out buttons so when i click on login i display some amount of content and when i log out i'll display some other amount of content okay let's see how uh, so for that let's make a design also so one container of bootstrap one row call md i guess uh, five okay so in this i have p dot uh, so two divisions so here p dot h3 let's say welcome user welcome user and the paragraph let's say lorem 30 tab yeah welcome user um okay and uh, some more content so i have uh, this is something called thank you okay Okay, so I have welcome user, some welcome message and also thank you message. Okay, and uh, I have two other buttons. Buttons, button with a class uh, btn, btn minus success. It's a login button. So I have another one that is a uh, warning this logout button come spaces okay fine so this is all your uh, component so i have welcome user thank you user and two buttons i have okay so my plan is uh, i don't want to display two message like this the moment I log in, I display this message. The moment I log out, I display this message. So you have to display this particular two messages depend on a particular condition. You log in or log out. So for that reason, I'll create my state with uh, is logged in. Okay. Is logged in with boolean value. Okay. 
and then I will initialize let an array is equal to u state where uh, when this is of type i state and uh, in this is login of type uh, first of all is login is false okay you have not login or let's say true yes you have login it is true by default it will be false only you say false okay fine now I say state and set state okay so I have is logged in and state and set state is there. Okay. So I create two functions. One is login. So what this function does is what this function does is it simply makes is logged in to true. It simply makes is logged in value to true. So I have another function called logout. log out to it makes a value to false so I have, I have just taken a state uh, is logged in and this function makes it to this function this function makes it false so first of all I want to apply the condition for these two divisions these two divisions so what is that is if it is login this this con this statement if not login this statement uh, sorry if, if not login this statement if login this statement so what you do is you make react expression let's say state dot is logged in is logged in they react dot fragment some statement otherwise otherwise react dot fragment another statement so this is like a true case false case so if login what to display if it is login I'll display um, Oh, sorry if it is login I'll display here if it is login display here okay I'll tell you what happened yeah see if it is login welcome user otherwise see this is other case it's like a condition statement and uh, we have thank you now tell me what is the state value is false so you are not login if you have not login then what happened login is this not login is this so you get the not login value this thank you only one uh, statement has been displayed so now uh, next step is the moment I click on login I'll say login function the moment I click on logout I'll say logout function so you click on login call login function click on logout logout function so this will change the actual value of uh, the state and depending on the state these two will be either hide or display okay toggle so now check um, I click on login see welcome user click on logout thank you like this and text is not getting changed maybe I have copy pasted okay now you check thank you click on login you get some content logout thank you okay like this fine one more condition also you can apply uh, because both the buttons cannot display in one shot either login either logout okay you can also apply the condition just like uh, these things here so for the buttons also what I do is state dot not this dot state uh, state uh, dot is logged in if login what to display not login what to display if login I'll display logout otherwise otherwise or this one okay yeah colon is there so if login this button otherwise this button so now check it is logout situation so that's why like this if I click on login welcome user and you got a activated logout button I click on logout login so login logout login logout okay so now we understand how conditionally you will render the content uh, depend on your state okay so now let's take another one uh, example that is how 
to iterate through a list of content because you have a list of item right array of items so this array of items how will you uh, loop through and display okay so let's see that one now welcome back so now what I do is uh, okay for list rendering uh, what I do is yeah I create another component called uh, uh, something called user list yeah so I create another component called TypeScript use list okay so let's have a snippet and replace this guy with user list replace all is done okay now um, what I do is I create another um, directory called models because I have to create a list of objects so models so in this I create I user okay so regular TypeScript file okay here I say export interface I user so here I need to have a field some uh, serial number as is, is a string name of type string age of type string uh, this number number and designation designation is string and company is string okay so I want a user with all this fields okay now I go with user list here I say state of type users of type I user array so array of data okay now let me specify the state so let an array is equal to use state use state of type i state okay so in this users so users you have to declare a list of users so i say state and set state okay so users data so here i'll take a first person serial number aa101 and what else name Rajan age 25 and designation is a software engineer engineer and what is company uh, something like uh, Infosys okay so I have one object let's take multiple objects as well okay three objects this is number two is John John 35 uh, is a senior software engineer in process and three this guy is um, something Wilson is 45 he's a, he's a tech lead okay one last one 104 this guy is uh, Laura some 55 years something like manager okay fine so I have a list of users okay so for example you want to see that just a pre tag expression so json dot stringify of state dot users okay so you get nothing oh I think I have not connected it to app uh, I say another row single column I come in the previous row okay here I say my user list okay so I have a list of users fine uh, raw data I got and this raw data you have loop through and display so how you display is see uh, what I want to convince you is you have to specify a separate model for your state of data and you can use that and use like this your own type okay and looping and all same like your regular uh, you know react js example so here i want to display them like a table format so i say uh, p dot h3 or else can we do like this yeah okay p 
dot once again I change this to one container one row single column okay p dot h3 user list okay yeah another row single column I just start with a table so table uh, you can apply the bootstrap classes for uh, rich look table uh, table striper text center and uh, table hover okay so in that I have T head with table row T head star six tab you have serial number you have name age is there yeah is there age designation company okay only five okay let's see uh, but no background and all so you can just add a pg dark and text to white okay so I got this yeah below that I want to display a data so let's add a T body T body yeah how you repeat you can make a condition like a state dot users dot length is greater than zero and you create a map function so state dot users dot map in that each user you return the actual statement where you write a table row okay for every user we need one row and there I have a key is user dot id do we have an id uh, sir it's not id it's a serial number okay fine and then uh, the same order like uh, serial number 3d expression the user dot serial number so you get all the serial numbers and uh, same like this I have a name I have age I have designation I have company so you got data okay that's all and for age you say something called years okay so uh, one last thing for table so say shadow okay looks good so this is how you you know loop through data but most important thing is you have to specify the type of it okay and one more thing i tell you there is something called react service so instead of writing you know the entire data inside a component uh, it's not looks good because component holds the whole you know application specific data instead you can take up this data handling into a separate class okay separate file so i call it as a service data service service provider so what i do is see a small you know uh, reformation for this so i create another folder called services okay in this i have one service provider typescript normal typescript file that is user service file user service file okay so export class user service normal uh, typescript file yeah here private static um, okay users is equal to an empty okay empty let's say i user array hmm. I made a mistake of type I user uh, don't we have I user is there right import statement required okay models okay I have declared a static variable and uh, what I do is uh, I can write it right like this data where is my data here is my data 
so let's cut this entire data and keep it in the service so I create a variable users of type I user array and its whole data is like this but here it is just an empty array so if you have an empty array what happens you don't get anything is empty okay so now here what I do is I create a function also so public static get all users so get all users so here what I do is return this dot users the users which we have declared I return from there okay this is a function now I have to call it from here so instead of empty array user service dot get all users so this looks simple right simple and clean so user service dot get all users so this will get data from the here and attached to this users and that users will be looped through and display so this is all about uh, services concept in react.js okay for as a data provider but as of now this whole data is there in local uh, coming example i tell you uh, how can you get this data from a server okay how to fetch data from server how to make react with server connection okay so that's fine I hope you understand this so let's meet uh, for another concept now all right so now let's start with uh, how can you make your react this application connect with a backend server uh, before I proceed with that let me take a backup of these things so I go to here crash course I create a new folder called uh, 03 hyphen what we discuss uh, uh, list and conditional rendering okay so let me grab this whole content apart from this node modules i'll keep it in crash codes okay so let's see how to make a server connection here so just like uh, hope you all know right how to make react with server connection is we have to depend on a axios okay so let's install axios and then i'll tell you how to make a configuration for server data uh, but how you install Axios is something different. npm install Axios. Okay, so generally for TypeScript related, uh, you know, uh, TypeScript oriented, uh, uh, sorry, JavaScript oriented uh, React.js we install like this. But for TypeScript oriented React.js, you have to specify at types slash Axios. Okay, install Axios and at types Axios. This is required. Okay, type specification or type definitions copy so let me install it here again make sure you have a proper internet connection so it is installing axios package that's the first step okay it's done now i clear the things uh, like components models services not required index.tsx I will clear this existing one okay and import statement not required okay fine so what my plan here is uh, there is a fake rest API uh, called uh, JSON placeholder yeah this is one uh, fake rest API available for us yeah here i have a link for users there are some 10 users uh, link is there 10 users link is there okay so uh, to make this url i mean when you when you make a get request for this url you get this type of data so let's me uh, tell you an example for this type of data one biggest issue for us is if this data is there and how you create a model channel for that okay so don't worry there is automate tool uh, to generate models for this type of data which okay so let's make a setup also uh, here i create a new directory called components and uh, i create new directory called services yes and i create new directory called uh, models okay three things fine in components i create one file for uh, 
user list the list of users jsx file and let's make a snippet user list is done okay and let me connect the user list here directly or else dot row single column was user list okay so first you check user list has been connected to app okay now i wanted to have a model so this model will have one file let's say i user okay normal type zip file but how you specify the uh, it says it is empty that's fine so how you specify the object type uh, in online you can search for types from json okay types from json there is a website called jv jvilk.com jvilk.com yeah here this is really helpful for you uh, to convert your data to a you know json so you can copy your entire json file and you need to paste at the left hand side box automatically it generates your type okay and you specify the name of uh, the 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 major object or outer object i user or just say user okay and then generate see it's creates interface i say just i user because my file name is i user so i user so generate so what happens see it generate interface and everything so copy that go back and paste it now check for this particular entire data we got a nice object type address geo everything has come okay this looks nice okay so easy step and then we have a component and we have a model and we need to have a service so let's go to service i create one typescript that is user service normal type file so export class user service okay so in this how you write a logic so let's make axios so import axios from uh, axios okay so let's server url of type string i think no let i guess it's just class right yeah private static server url of type string is equal to yeah let me get the server url is this one or you can just say up to dot com is my server url let's say public static get all users is a function get all users so what it does is let data url of type string is equal to backtick so i make use of my server url slash users okay we want to get users slash users you want to get to do slash to do's like that okay so server url is common yeah return axios dot get request for data url simple axios dot get request for data url and i have to call this function and uh, it returns a promise so i resolve the promise in my component okay so go to user list so first i take up the state i have loading uh, with a value uh, with, a, with a value boolean users users is i user array and error message string okay so let's take the state let something is equal to use state this is of type i state and here i have a state and set state let me declare and then here mm, you need to have data right yeah loading becomes false for spinner uh, comma users will be just empty array as i user i user array comma um, error message goes to be empty okay 
now how to you know fetch data uh, you have to use a use effect hook so use effect hook <coughs> you have function inside <coughs> sorry you have function inside yeah in this i have to call a service for fetching data so how do i do this uh, i create or i directly call like this uh, user service dot get all users dot then dot catch okay so dot then gives me a function with a successful data dot catch gives me a function with error so this is your response okay just for time being i'll say console dot log of response dot data let's see what is the response is coming from a server back here i will refresh go inspect console see we got all the data 10 records and this i need to set to the state and then uh, error okay so i'll cut this set state where dot 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 state where loading becomes true so it will become false and users will be response dot data okay uh, before i you know trying to get connection to the server i say set state dot 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 state and users will be an empty is true see before i sending request to server before i send request to server i want to start the spinner once i receive data i stop the spinner okay that reason i say true and after receiving is false if you get some error also it's false okay so let's say let's state set state um loading false and error message will be uh, error dot message okay that's all so you have data in a state now and how you retrieve the data you can use the destructure that something is equal to state so here i say uh, loading and users and error message okay but how you display them all the users how the users data name email uh, you can display them like a card or you can display them like a table just display like a table um, table table or else you take like this one container one row single column let's take a table table with the previous classes table table hover text center and uh, um table ta table striped okay so t head t head the class bg success and text uh, white um table row t h star six tab serial number and the name or else email phone number email phone number and you also have a company company and uh, website okay so let's take another one t body yeah here you check what you check for uh users dot length users dot length is greater than zero and uh, and what users dot map you get the each user it returns it returns your table row so each user have a id that is user dot id and then td let's say uh, user dot id so you get all the users ids that's fine now name email and phone number user dot name 
I think uh, you should be very careful because name is yeah name is, name is that variable only that's fine if it is an object then you have to specify uh, object specific data because object directly you can't print it okay so email phone number website all regular so this is email this is phone this is website all and company name company is not a direct value is an object so company dot name you specify so here it is company dot name okay so now check oh, I made a mistake I guess class name <laughs> I made a mistake user dot company dot name okay perfect see now you got the data from the server okay so this is how you generally fetch data from the server this is how you know react will kind of server but only one thing uh, I want to tell you the differences uh, you must have to sp specify the object type like this as a model and uh, in service also you specify everything like all the types okay and here you specify the state type and you create it you declare it and you can use it later on okay so that's all i want to tell you in server connection so let's meet now with routing concept of react.js all right so now let's convert this whole application with routing itself okay so first let me take a backup of this and then we'll convert routing so what i do is i go here i'll create a new folder uh, 04 hyphen server with axios okay let's take a copy of it okay so uh, for routing what I do is uh, first you have to uh, install the routing packages yeah I have installed routing packages so I'll tell you here npm install react router dom this is the command right uh, but this is for a javascript based react js for typescript you have to specify extra it types uh, slash uh, react router dom okay this is extra so let's copy that back to your application and uh, clear screen and paste it enter so this will download your router package for us uh, so make sure you have proper intent connection and uh, yeah it is installed okay so that's fine yep now um, how to configure the routing is first in the components I create few more components like I create new uh, navbar components JSX. Okay, so I'll take up this here navbar. I replace here with navbar component. Okay, so I create one more. Uh, same like navbar, I create a about component. This is about component. And I also create a home page component. Or let's just skip because only user list is my home page component. And uh, I paste one more for page not found. Page not found component. I replace this guy with page not found component. Fine. and one last thing is user details component user details component I replace it with user details component oh I made a TS file oh I had to change it to TSX okay fine so all components has been ready and uh, we also install the 
uh, what router DOM okay and react router DOM 6 version so router DOM 6 okay uh, now how to configure them is first step you have to go to index.tsx you need to import something called import the browser router and you import it for app browser router with app okay that's the first step and after that in the app so you have to configure all the routes okay i will delete this entire setup so now it's completely empty empty right yeah i think it's it's running right yep okay it is empty so now let's make a, a router configuration so i first i write navbar you got navbar under that you need to configure a few things so what things i need is let me import from uh, uh, router so from react router dom react router dom the things which we need is in react router 5 we have uh, switch okay but here we don't have it it is react router dom 6 version so it is roots and root okay so here i say roots in the, the first root 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 with the path empty generally it will be empty slash okay and there is no component for that root path so generally for empty you have a home page component but we don't have home page we just have directly you know uh, user list so you can write a uh, element previously it was component in 5 version now it is element uh, here i will redirect to this path like slash contacts slash list i wanted to redirect to this path so how you redirect is there is a another tag called navigate okay so you specify here navigate to i say slash contacts slash list so what happens is whenever you make a request for slash it automatically redirected to this path and when this path is there i want to load an element i want to load an element that is contact user list user list component you want to check just see see i made a empty enter but redirected to contactless okay i got a contactless okay and uh, one more i say contacts slash colon id okay if you looking for a contact slash particular id i'll say user details component and lastly i just say about i want to have a about component so all are imported automatically fine uh, okay so this is how you make router configuration from a six version of router react router and uh, so let's make navbar setup first so navbar i'll make simple bootstrap navbar uh, navbar with the class navbar navbar dark vg dark and navbar expand sm one container one link okay so let's say import something called link from daughter down let's say link to slash empty and just say um, react router okay uh, the class name goes to be navbar navbar brand it is okay so you got a nice navbar and let's make this user list to have nice content okay go back to uh, user list yeah for uh, yeah this guy one container one row single column p dot h3 user list like this 
and let's have some margin top three and uh, let's have font weight bold and let's say text uh, success under that I have a paragraph let's say uh, class name font style uh, italic let's say lorem pretty tap you get some content okay that's fine user list I got okay uh, now next step is next step is uh, I want this uh, name right I want this name to be some link when I click on this particular name I want to display the whole data of this person whole data of this person so how do I do that just click on let's let's make a link and it should go to another component another page so that will be a your uh, user details component okay that comes with by passing an ID in the URL so what I do is let's import import link from dr. Dom yeah so wherever I have a name I will uh, make a link link to something called backtick slash have a name and then name become a link so this goes to contacts slash what was the path contact slash ID so I have an ID of user that is dynamic ID user dot id okay so when i click on this particular person so that particular id will send to the url so i refresh check see keep a cursor you check contact slash one two three four like see contact slash two contact slash three contact slash seven like that okay so this is fine and uh, if you don't want this you know underline and all you can write some classes also class name text decoration none and text success and font weight bold okay this become a link now okay so Lenin Graham I click on it it sends to another path with a dynamic ID so now what you do is you have to read this ID and send data and get data from server so what I do is I go to user details first of all how you read this id how you can read this id how you read the id is import something from react router dom okay there is something called use params hook use params okay and this use params also you need to specify the type interface url params where you have what this ID so I say ID of type string okay and how you receive it is let something is equal to uh, use params use params of type URL params or this any okay and what you receive is ID okay uh, you, you want to see this ID this make here h1 tag ID or user ID so see you get the one so I search for someone else I got the ID okay so this ID you send to server and fetching that particular data for example what happens see this URL users you get all the users okay if I say slash one I get only that person data so this request I have to call but to make this request you don't have a service function with that we make now okay so public static get user get a particular user so here you say user ID okay you specify user ID of type string and uh, let data URL users slash the user ID what you provided okay and it returns axios dot get of data URL okay this is the you know uh, service call yeah go to user details and you can specify your state now let's say loading becomes boolean and um, 
uh, user object becomes an empty object as i user <laughs> sorry sorry i user and error message is string okay fine now um, you have to specify the state as well let something is equal to u state u state of type uh, i state in this uh, in this loading becomes false and user object becomes an empty object as i user comma error message becomes empty so let's take a state and set state okay so and then i say use a fetch hook dependent is uh, my id yeah here i have to call a user service dot get user by providing id dot then dot catch so it says id can be undefined okay let's say if id is there then only you make a request okay that looks good because types type safety okay because what type step um here i have a response and catch i have a response yeah this response goes to be uh, let's say console dot log of response dot data let's see how you get data i refresh for seven uh, what is that person object see it is rex trail his data has come perfect now what to do this data you set to the local so set state set state dot 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 state and uh, loading becomes loading becomes false and uh, user become response dot data and before you fetch set state dot 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 state and loading becomes true okay before fetch and finally for error for error i'll say it is false and error message goes to be error dot message okay so you got data and this data how you going to project simple you can use a bootstrap container one row single column recipe dot h3 um, user details with the uh, text uh, success and font weight bold and i have a paragraph with a class font style italic let's say lorem query tab you get something like this user details page and let me display the complete details in a uh, ul tag one row single column and that one ul in that li okay i'll say um, class list group and this is with the class list group item okay let's display the name name how we display let me write a span tag get a class again font weight bold display the name but before i display the name i need to check it like i'm empty object or not how do i check let me cut this i'll check object dot keys of user object user don't we have user oh we have there okay okay let me destructure how to destructure loading and user and error message so i say here user dot length is greater than 0 then you make this statements okay so here i say the expression um user dot name you get the name of it you check lenny graham lenny graham data has come okay so like name and email whatever data you want you can print it so name phone number and just say email and uh, company 
company location it's like uh, city city state and country okay let's make it name phone number let's say email and uh, company dot name and city is I think it's location or address dot city address dot state is not there address dot country come on what is there address dot city is there country rental not there zip code is there but okay just say only uh, zip code Okay, looks good. Yeah, fine. You got the complete details, and I need to have a back button so that it, I can go back to the previous page. Okay, so how do I go back? Um, there's a row, right? Another row. Okay, I'll take another row. Single column. Let's take a link to slash. Let's say back. Uh, with a class btn btn bt btn btn minus success back button let's have some margin top three okay so now check back to home page okay then in graham back this one back like that uh, a bit slow it is fine so now we got um, I mean we are done with a router and you need to have some routing like uh, on the navbar like about page and all you can make for example navbar I think I may I need to make collapse and I say navbar collapse in that one ul li and uh, link uh, tag okay so let's give the class called I guess it is nav or nav this is nav item nav item and uh, here you have to give a class name nav link okay so here you need to specify slash yeah for empty slash it should be um, user list okay you get the user list along with that I need to have another one that is for about page so slash about it goes to be about page if I click on about it goes to about page okay but about page doesn't have any content we'll make it now about page uh, let's take some container one row Single column B dot H3. Let's say text uh, success and uh, font rate bold about us. So about us, okay. Let's say uh, paragraph with a class font style uh, italic. Let's say lorem 30 tab okay and let's also say margin top three okay like that and below that i need to have another row single column uh, some ul tags for example in user details we have some ul tag right mm, here ul tag so app name and the author okay so app name is just static data mm, react router with uh, typescript and author my name okay that's all fine 
so uh, we have now understand about the routing system so there is no refresh page refresh because a single page application so you can go and backwards like that okay so that's all enough for this crash course so we have now really understand uh, what is react.js with typescript uh, like uh, from project creation onwards we discuss almost all the concepts okay so that's it thank you so much let's meet